this video, I want to give you my alternative theory on alternative theories and even mainstream theories. And what I mean by that is theories or reasons or explanations why things are the way they are socially, politically, uh, and also looking at conspiracy theories as well. So as someone who's been into conspiracy theories uh, for a decent chunk of my life, really the, the most conclusive, irrefutable, <laughs> and most concrete explanation that I've ever come across basically comes down to stupidity and incompetence. <laughs> now, I apologize in advance if that's uh, rude or offensive or a little too direct way of putting it, uh, but I'll unpack and explain what I mean by that. Uh, the first is, we're just talking about stupidity, or perhaps we could say a little more gently, lack of education, or even more specifically, extremely low literacy levels, especially in America. Uh, it's over half the population has a literacy level 6th grade or below. So, and uh, that means that's kind of the level they're processing the world, because the level that you're kind of literate at is kind of the level in which you think it's the co complexity of ideas that you understand and the complexity of thoughts that you tend to have. Meaning, like, if you're presented with an issue, rather than being seeing it, at, rather than being able to see it as a bit of a gradient or see many different shades of black and white and gray in between, you kind of just see one really simple, basic idea. Or, like, let's say there's my fingernail or something, just as a stupid example, and all you're really able to focus on is like the very little tip of the white part, but you're missing the entire rest of the human being behind it. And not only that, but the, the amount of time that your attention span is able to be on that is extremely low. And then the, the amount of absorption your awareness is able to go into that object is extremely low, combined with extremely low literacy and a completely oversimplification of thought processes and no complexity, then it's really... Uh, <laughs> not that hard to arrive at really understanding easily why things are often the way they are. Uh, so that's one part of it. The other part of it is that the majority of people, you know, just aside from the half of the country that is sixth grade and below, the majority of people are about seventh grade. So they're, so it's kind of like you're dealing with people that are intellectually about 12 years old. Uh, and to me, that was something that I'd, I'd heard the stat so many times before, and but then I would always be so frustrated, you know, dealing with people and dealing with situations and even making YouTube channels, making YouTube videos for 12 years and teaching classes and doing things. So I was so frustrated sometimes. And then when I came back to this stat, I was like, oh, <laughs> that explains a lot. Uh, if... I just, I, I would think, oh, I'm talking to an adult, and you've probably had this experience many times before, too, where you think you're talking to an adult. You're looking at this person who is kind of like maturity-wise, what, however many years old, but then you have to realize that intellectually and their actual thought process and their processing power is maybe just a 12-year-old, so you're actually only dealing with a 12-year-old, which if I think of myself when I was 12, I was pretty dumb. I wasn't really entertaining complicated ideas or nuanced perspectives or analyzing things from different angles or having a lot of self-awareness or whatever. So if you actually understand that and realize that at least in America, that's the majority of people that you're dealing with. Half, Over half the population is sixth grade and below, and then another chunk is about seventh grade, maybe eighth grade. And then the, the amount of people that are actually functioning at like a fairly high level is like less than 1%. Like it's pretty small. Granted, we're talking about statistics and we're talking about things here, but it kind of just gives you at least an idea to kind of understand and contextualize things in a different way. So to me, the real amazing thing is that things really function and work at all, <laughs> considering that basic stat. And then also just flipping to the other thing, which I suggested earlier, which was basic incompetence, which... If you're at that low level of literacy and comprehension, it's not necessarily a stretch to say that incompetence or motivation uh, or work ethic are going to be that high either. And if you, I mean, if you just watch documentaries, you look at history, you look at world events, and you really, you really dial it down. Like even major world events. I mean, thinking of, I can think of uh, 
in China, for example, during the Cultural Revolution, one of the major reasons why hundred like so many millions of people died of starvation well, was kind of a few reasons, but one of the main reasons is that they identified this bird that they said was like the number one pest. And basically everyone got together to kill this bird and eradicate it because they thought it was like so terrible, right? Which I'm oversimplifying, of course, but this is the idea. But then what happened is they didn't realize that that bird actually ate all of these other pests. And those pests actually, when they went unchecked, decimated their crops, decimated their ability to grow food. So then basically they had a massive food shortage. Uh, and then, you know, millions and millions of people starved to death as a result of that one simple stupid decision. You can watch uh, shows and documentaries about Chernobyl, many other events in history that we look at as these great tragedies, these great things, oftentimes go back to like one stupid decision or someone being so dumb that they don't realize they're pushing way past anything common sense or reasonable. These are people in positions of power, people that are supposed to be somewhat authorities or people that are supposed to be looking out for common good. And I just really encourage you to study history and look at so many different events like that that really come down to just basic incompetence. I can think of 9-11 as another example, which of course is a massive tragedy, but in actuality, a lot of that came down to the fact that the CIA and the FBI were not sharing in intelligence and information. The CIA uh, knew all knew these people were in the country long for a long time. They knew they were Al Qaeda. They knew what they were up to, but they didn't do anything with the information. They didn't share it with anyone, and until after the event had already happened. So it's like. And again, I could keep going for an hour or two of just different historical events that have shaped human history massively that really come down to just kind of stupidity and incompetence. <laughs> Sometimes it's not even a grandiose theory or some puppet pulling the strings. Sometimes it's just a good old-fashioned, like, human stupidity and incompetence. Uh, and that's just kind of what I've seen to be the most common denominator across so many historical events that I've looked at uh, different empires that have risen and fallen and so many different things, you know, macro and micro scale, that really comes down to those two basic simple things. Uh, and of course, sure, there may be our conspiracies and there may be our, you know, fractions of elite groups that sway things in different ways, of course. But again, I think that also just comes back to stupidity and incompetence because if if the vast majority of people are at this very low level, then for you to get to a higher level doesn't necessarily even necessarily take that much. Like if I think about people like Bill Gates and other really successful people, and I listen to them talk, I listen to some of their ideas, they sound really stupid. Like Bill Gates says a lot of really stupid things, a really a lot of just pathetic ideas. Uh, same, with, same with the people at the World Economic Forum and all these other kind of influential figures, which, get me wrong, these people are powerful, clearly have way more power and way more influence and way more success and wealth than I do. But I still listen to them talk, and I still listen to their ideas, and they sound completely idiotic, completely poorly thought out, poorly defined, poorly constructed, poorly researched, poorly delivered, all of the things. Just You're like, this is not great. <laughs> but obviously, you know, they're competent at something because they're in that position, or they're in the right place at the right time, or good luck, or whatever. But anyways, wanted to be concise and just give you this kind of alternative theory on alternative theories. Hopefully it makes sense. And I'll talk to you soon.